Welcome to another episode in the GDScript Fundamental Tutorial Series. In this episode, we will be talking about the match statement. So a match statement is a type of selection control mechanism used to allow the value of a variable or expression to change the control flow of a program execution via search and map. Basically, you use a variable to match a pattern and execute the code inside the match block statement. One thing to keep in mind is that patterns are matched in chronological order. If a pattern matches, the match block will be executed. After the block of code has run, the match statement will exit the chain. So you'll find yourself using two things quite a lot when using match statement. One is the underscore. You can use the underscore symbol at the bottom of a match statement to denote a default block statement to run. The second thing you may find yourself using is the continue keyword. What that basically does is if you would like to continue looking through match patterns, you use the continue keyword. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example of a match statement without the continue keyword. As you see here, you have the keyword match followed by a value. That value can be anything, a variable, dictionary, array. It could even be a hard literal. But no matter the value, what you're gonna have are patterns underneath it. In this case, we have one and an underscore. What that basically means is that our value has to match one of these patterns in order to execute the code inside. As we've discussed previously, the underscore is considered like a default block. So here you can see the match keyword is followed by a value. After the value, you will have yourself patterns that you'll use to see if the value matches any of the patterns. So let's go ahead and take a look at a basic match statement flowchart. As you can see, when we've started the match statement, we take the value and we look at the patterns. In this case, we look at case one, we check the pattern. If the pattern matches, we enter the block statement and we exit the code. However, if the pattern doesn't match, we move on to the next pattern. We check if they match and if they match, we enter the block statement and exit the code. However, if that's false, you'll either exit the code or if you have an underscore, which is considered to be the default block, you'll enter the default block you'll enter the block statement and then you'll exit the code. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example with the continue keyword. Very simple, all you have to do is just type continue at the bottom of your match statement block. What this basically means is that even if your value matches a pattern, continue and check other patterns after it. What this looks like is basically the same thing as the first match statement. However, we're using the continue keyword. We take a value, we check if our value matches a pattern, and if it matches, we enter the block statement, execute all the code, and then we move on to the next pattern. We do the same thing. We check if that pattern matches our value, and if it does, we enter the statement block, execute the code, and we move on to the next. Now, in this case, we have a default. If there was no default, you would just exit your match statement chain. However, if you do have the default, which is again the underscore, you'll enter that because it's a wildcard. You'll enter that statement and you'll exit. Very simple stuff. Once you get the hang of it, of course. So there are seven different types of match patterns you may find yourself using in GDScript. You have the constant pattern, the variable pattern, the wildcard pattern, the binding pattern, the array pattern, the dictionary pattern, and the multiple pattern. Let's go ahead and take a look at the constant pattern. A constant pattern is very simple. It's basically just primitive data types. You know, your booleans, your strings, integers, etc. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example of a constant pattern. So you can see here, we're just using literal values. In this case, an integer value and a string value. We're basically saying if X is either one or the string hello, keep in mind that strings have to be case sensitive. Very simple, very straightforward. Let's move on. Next, you have the variable pattern. Just as the name implies, you're using a variable or enum to represent your match pattern. If you look at the print statement, that's basically how we're trying to match our pattern. If X is equivalent to health and for the name, if X is equivalent to name. Again, very straightforward. Let's move on. Now, we've talked briefly about the underscore symbol being the default, but in reality, the underscore symbol is a wildcard pattern. Basically, a wildcard pattern is used to match everything. Again, sometimes this pattern is used as a default block, meaning it runs when all other tests fail. However, you don't have to use it as a default block. Since match statements run in chronological order, it's best to use the wildcard pattern as your last pattern in the match statement chain. Let's take a look at an example of the wildcard pattern. It's very simple. It's just an underscore. An underscore will match anything and everything. Moving on, we have the binding pattern. 
The binding pattern catches everything, just like the wildcard statement. However, the binding pattern assigns the match value into a variable. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. As you can see here, we have declared a variable in our match pattern, var, and a variable name. Very important, you have the keyword var followed by a name for your variable. Basically what this means is that whatever is in your match value, that value will get passed onto the variable that you just named in your pattern. And then you can use that name in your block statement. So as you can see here, we have the print statement, print value of X, and we're using our newly created variable. Keep in mind that these variables are local scoped, which means you can only use the variable name in the block statement that belongs to the pattern. Okay, moving on to an array pattern. An array pattern is basically that every single element in the array is a pattern in itself, and arrays can be nested in your patterns. A very important thing to keep in mind is that you can use sub patterns inside your array. So when you are testing your value with an array pattern, it is tested in the following order. First, the length of the array is tested. If that match fails, or rather, if the length of the value and the pattern are different, then the match fails. However, if it passes, then the next thing it tests for is if the value and the pattern elements inside the array are the same. If the array of the value is different than the pattern array, then your test will fail. However, if they are the same, then it passes and it executes everything inside the block statement belonging to that array pattern. And let's go ahead and take a look. In this case, we have a value X and we're matching three different things. So the first thing we're testing is an empty array. If your X has a value of an empty array, then it's gonna go ahead and match our array pattern, the first array pattern, and it's gonna print out empty array. However, if that fails, X is going to move on and test itself in the second pattern. X needs to have exactly a 1, 2, 3 as the first three elements of its array, followed by anything because the pattern in the second pattern array is a wildcard. So that means X's fourth element can be any value. And lastly, the fifth element of X can be any value. However, it is going to be passed into a binding pattern. In this case, we called it last element. You can use last element inside the block statement belonging to the second array pattern. So yes, you can use different types of patterns inside your array of pattern. Now the last pattern in this example, as you notice at the very end or the third element, we're using two periods. What this means is that our array is open-ended. Basically, if X has an array with the first two elements being the value of one and two, it can be anything and any size after that, and it will match the third element. Again, this is called an open-ended array. Array patterns are very powerful. You can do quite a lot with it. So moving on to the last example, we have the dictionary pattern. The dictionary pattern works just like the array pattern, except instead of arrays, you'll be using dictionaries. Keep in mind that all keys have to be constants when using them in your patterns. However, the values you use in your key value pair for your pattern dictionaries can be anything. And by anything, I mean sub patterns. So sub patterns can be used on the dictionary values of the dictionary pattern. Okay, moving on. So basically dictionary patterns follow the same test format that array patterns use. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So first, the length of the dictionary value is tested against the dictionary pattern. If the match fails, then we move on to the next pattern. Unless, of course, you're using the double period sub pattern, which makes your pattern an open-ended dictionary. Now, if the test pass, what the value and what the pattern look for is if they hold the same key and value pair. If the key and value pairs are different, then your test will fail. However, if they match, then your test will pass. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So our first example is an empty dictionary. If X is an empty dictionary, we meet or rather we match the first pattern and we go ahead and print out empty dictionary. Now, the second one behaves just like our array example. However, keep in mind that our keys and values have to be exactly the same. What this means is X has to have key and value and key two and 
any value in order to pass for the second pattern. Now, the last example is an open-ended dictionary. Just like the array, you use two periods at the end, and basically your value can be any dictionary of length, except its first key value pair has to be key followed by value. The last pattern is the multiple pattern. You can specify multiple patterns as long as they are separated by commas. Multiple patterns cannot have bindings to them. Basically, you can have a range of values that the value can match against. It doesn't have to match against just a single value, it can match against multiple values. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. As you can see here, we have a pattern, one, two, three, four, five, everything separated by commas, keep that in mind. And basically what this means is that as long as x has a value of 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, we will match the pattern and we will execute everything in the block statement. Very simple, very straightforward, easy to use. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope to see you in the next.